chapter and verse is number 17 sorry 13 7 6 candle yeah. 13 7 yes, yes. ayame dena ayame dena purusham purusham Ishwaram, Ishwa, Ishwa, Narayanayanam, Narayanam, Mokshase, Api, 
जगत विदात हया मेरे न पुरुषम परमात्म ईश्वर ईश्वरनाराण मोक्षसे जगत्दाएमेदेन पुषात्मश्वर ईश्वरनाराण मोक्ष से जगत बदात sacrifice known as ashwamedha by the sacrifice known as ashwamedha purusham purusham the supreme person the supreme person paramatmanam paramatmanam the super soul the super soul ishwaram ishwaram the supreme controller the supreme controller ishtwa ishtwa worshiping worshiping narayanam narayanam lord narayan lord narayan devam The Supreme Lord, Lord. Moksha say, Moksha say, you will be liberated, liberated. Api, even, even Jagat Vidat, from the sin of killing the whole world. Wow. The Rishis continued, O King Indra, by performing an Ashramaya Yagya. and thereby pleasing the supreme personality of god it who is the super soul lord narayan the supreme controller one can be relieved even of the sinful reactions for killing the entire world what to speak of killing a demon like richasura is there a purport Is there a purport? This is completely different, right? Got the next verse? Huh? Okay. 
got it a translation. Right. So this is the next verse. Yeah. One who has killed a Brahmin, one who has killed a cow, and one who has killed his father, mother, or spiritual master can be immediately freed from all sinful reactions simply by chanting the holy name of Lord Narayan. Only sin other sinful persons like dog eaters and chandalas, who are less than sudras, can also be freed in this way. But you are devotee, and we shall help you by performing the great horse sacrifice. If you please, Lord Narayan, in this way, why should you be afraid? You will be freed even if you kill the entire universe, including the brahmanas, not to speak of killing and disturbing demon like the tisura. It's stated in the Brihad Vishnu Purana. It's too small, I can't. No. Namno Bhavati Sukchakti Papa Nirhanane Hare Tabat Kartumna Shaknoti Pita Kam Palaki Nara. Also in the Prema Vyarta by Jagadanda Pandit, it is said, Eka Krishna Nama Papira Yatta Papa Chaya Bahu Janme Se Papira Yara Papa Karite Narai. This means that by once chanting the holy name, one can be freed from the reactions of more sins than you can ever imagine performing. The holy name is so spiritually potent that simply by chanting the holy name, one can be freed from the reactions of all sinful activity. What then is to be said of those who chant the holy name regularly and worship the deity regularly? For such purified devotees, freedom from sinful reaction is certainly assured. This does not mean, however, that one should immediately commit sinful activity. One should intentionally commit sinful activities and think himself free from the reaction because he's chanting. Such mentality is the most abominable offense at the lotus feet of the Lord. Nam no balad asya ni papa buddhi. The Lord's holy name certainly has the potency to neutralize all sinful activities. But if one repeatedly and intentionally commits sins while chanting, he is most condemned. These verses name the performers of various sinful deeds. In Manusanhita, the following names are given. A son begotten by a Brahmin and born in the womb of a Sudra is called a Parashava or Nishada, a hunter accustomed to stealing. A son begotten by a Nishada in the womb of a Shudra is called a Pukasa. A child begotten by a Chatriya in the womb of the daughter of a Sudra is called a Ugra. A child begotten by a Sudra in the womb of the daughter of a Chatriya is called a Chatta. A child begotten by a Chatriya in the womb of a lower class woman is called Swada or dog eater. All such offspring are considered extremely sinful. But the holy name of the Lord is so strong that all of them can be purified simply by chanting the Hare Krishna mantra. Hare Krishna movement offers everyone a chance to be purified, regardless of birth or family, as termed in Srimad Bhagavatam confirmed. 2.4.18 Kirata Hunanda Purinda Purkasha Abhira Shumba Yavana Kashadaya Ye and ye chapapa, yet a pasha yasaya, shuyanti tasmai, palavishna ve namaha. Kiratas, hunas, andras, pulindas, pulkashas, aviras, shumbas, yavanas, members of the kasa races, and even others addicted to sinful acts can be purified by taking shelter of devotees of the Lord for he is the supreme power. I beg to offer my respectful obeisances unto him. 
even such simple persons can certainly be purified if they chant the holy name of the Lord under the direction of the pure devotee. Herein the sages encourage Indra to kill Vichasura, even at the risk of Brahma Hacha, by killing of a Brahmana, and they guarantee to release him from the sinful reactions by performing Ashramita Yagya. Such purposely devised atonement cannot, however, achieve the relieve the performer of sinful acts. This will be seen in the following verse. Okay. Om Ajnana Timirandasya Yananjana Shalakaya Chaksura Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurvenama Shri Chaitanya Manobhistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swa Padantikam Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swamini Tinamani Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pracharani Nirvisesha Shunyavadi Paschacha Desa Dharani Vanshakalpa Turvyascha Kripa Sindhu Vyebhacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnave Dio Namaha Namo Mahabhara Nyaya Krishna Prema Pradayate Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namani Gora Tushena He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagadpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostate Tapta Kanchana Gorange Radhe Vrindavani Shri Vishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priyate So many information there. Of course, in this case, it's Richasura, although he's a Brahmin father or something. He's acting as a big demon and killing him would liberate him. But, so the point is, the Holy Name is so powerful, it can nullify past sinful reactions. But if one thinks it can work, you know, for the future, that this is nominal baladi papabhut. That's the seventh offense to sin on the strength of chanting. And that's the worst. Uh, I think you might know the history of your Lutheran church, right? In Germany. Right? Martin Luther, he was a monk. And the, the priest was saying that no one could approach God directly the priest has to be, pay the priest and he'll pay for it. But they got so degraded, they were calling it selling indulgences. If you wanted to get drunk, that's sinful. But if you pay the priest a certain amount, then he'll pray for you and it's okay. <laughs> so that's the worst thing. Uh, and that's the sahajya. In, and sahajas are everywhere, that in every religion, that kind of idea. Jesus, in America, we have these, we call born-again Christians. You meet them here. You know, it's like, they have this idea also that the Bible says uh, no one can stop sinning or something. So, therefore, don't worry, Jesus will take care of you. He died for your sins. Well, I was distributing books in Australia one time, and one Indian guy, he went by and he said, I'm a Christian. So I said, okay, good. Go and sin no more. That's what Jesus said. And he, he said, I don't have to worry. I have a good advocate, he said. Good lawyer, Jesus. So he'll get me off. So that, that is the worst mentality. We can't, it's not all, you know, many, there are many very sincere Christians who repent and try to do good, but, and there are many good Hindus, but there are many Sahajas also. And Bhaktivinoda listed them off, and, you know, they, they have different stress on different sinful activities, but they think because they're chanting, 
And they'll even say to us, like, don't you know how powerful the Holy Name is? You know, you don't have to worry. You can sin all you want. And that's the worst defense, to try to cheat Krishna. You can't cheat Krishna. He's the most expert of all cheaters. So go back a little bit to the purport, because it's a lot of different things there. Or go up, you're on the verse again. And the Chaitanya Tartamrita says that if you compare, I don't know if it's a million Asamedha Yogas or something, to once chanting the holy name of Krishna, that's Aparad. Because the Asamedha Yogas generally, all these Yogas that they did, they're, they're for material gain. More. So then just some verses to stress on the power of the holy name and you can be freed from more sins like like Ajamil. He was, you know, been very sinful his whole life. Not his whole life, but so much of it. But because he was chanting the name of Narayan offenselessly, he was relieved of all the sinful reactions. But then he also realized he didn't die at that time. And then he, he went to the holy place and performed tapasya to perfect his life. He didn't think, oh great, I'm freed from all the sinful reaction, now I can keep sinning. But that's the real thing. So if even it's someone who is sinful, or a chance, you know, in a t you know, without knowing what he's doing, he can get freed from reactions. <clears throat> that means in the next life he won't have to suffer for all. In this life we might go on suffering. But then what to speak of all of us and all of you who are chanting regularly and trying to serve the Lord and avoiding all the sinful activities, what? Then those benefits, there's so many things you can do to get freed of sinful reactions. You know, to get good karma, to get a better birth in the next life. But if one does those things simply to think that I, I, I can go on sinning, like in the law, If you do some kind of small crime, driving too fast or something, what do they do here? You pay some fine, right? And then you can still drive. I don't know, in Japan, they also take points off your driver's license. So if you, you can keep paying the fine, but eventually you don't have a driver's license anymore. And then if you drive without a driver's license, you're gonna get put in prison or something. So you can't just go on like that for minor crimes, for big crimes. Some big criminals can do that, but generally you can't just bribe the judge or the policeman. So you can't, but Krishna, you can never cheat Krishna. He's put into place all these laws, and so the Holy Name has the potency to neutralize sinful activities, but uh, we shouldn't misuse it. So more. So all these different details which is there in Vedic culture. Uh, nowadays people are very careful about breeding their dogs or their horses or something but not people. They, so we have a lot of Varna Sankara, we have a lot of children. But here's saying that they may not necessarily have done so many sinful activities, but no matter what birth, that's the point, no matter what so-called low birth someone took, if they, they can be purified by the Holy Name. And Prabhupada had full faith. If you go a little further, there's a uh, Kirata, who, what is it? Kirata, Hunandra, Purinda, all these low birth, 
And then in the purport in the second canto, it says about what they all are, you know, the African people and the, the Huns. I think the Huns were from somewhere around Germany, right? Attila the Hun, right? At least in America, we heard about him. And just, you know, they just savage. And they just went around raping and looting and burning villages and killing everybody and low class. And the Andra, I don't know why Andra, because Andra is where Tirupati is and, you know, in South India where there's many, many temples. But some people consider the Andrans very low class. That's in the Bhagavatam. When Shalya, he was actually a, the father or the brother of Madri, one of the wives of Pandu. But he was in the battle, he was driving a chariot for uh, Karna. And Krishna had told him, when you drive for Karna, speak in a way to discourage him. So he was insulting Karna and telling him how great Arjuna was and he shouldn't really try. And Karna got very angry. And Shalya was from Andhra Pradesh. So he started saying, I know all about the Andrans and they're all low class and they kill cows and the women keep their hair long and they dance all night and all kinds of stuff. And just went on and on. But then Shalya said, there's good and bad people everywhere. <laughs> and ended it. <laughs> so, but all these people, no matter how sinful their culture is, like Ravana, when Sita said, what kind of scumbag are you that you're kidnapping other men's wives and daughters? He said, what's wrong with that? That's what Rakshashas do. That's our culture. <laughs> so why are you criticizing me? I'm just doing what, you know, my birth. But Krishna can purify anybody no matter what the low birth is. Yavanas, Kasadayan, Mongolians, and ye and ye chapapa, yadapashraya swayan. Even those who have taken shelter of all sinful life, I always think that was America. So many people ran away from the rest of the world to go to America to take where they had freedom of all sinful activities. <laughs> and other, they had, because they were being oppressed in other countries, in some cases, for religion or for whatever reason. But so America, you know, made very heavy laws, freedom of everything. So when Prabhupada first got off the ship uh, and he saw a little bit of America, you know, everywhere was whiskey bars and meat restaurants and things he hadn't really seen. In Calcutta they have those things, but they're not, they're off to the edges of town, you know, and not anymore, but it used to be that. So he said, how you sent me to such a sinful place but I know these people can be purified. Devotees once were in South India, one of the famous temples, and on a stone there they had etched this verse, Kirata Hunandra Purinda Pukash. And the priest told the devotees, he said, your spiritual master had full faith in this. He said, we never really believed it. You know, the, like Lord Chaitanya said, Prithivite, Achayanta, Nagarati Gram, my holy name will be chanted in every town and village. The God Brothers of Prabhupada thought maybe all the towns and villages of India, but not any place else. They just pictured, you know, almost like it was supposedly before Columbus. If you sailed, you know, the, the earth is, would just fall off the edge. You know. It's just some big square thing. And they were thinking like that, that, you know, the rest of the world is so uncivilized, which is true, but uh, so they couldn't expect the Holy Name to spread. But actually it spread in India, now like unbelievably wildfire. But it was all set into motion by people from these sinful 
American and European countries. I went there and lived, you know, very austere. When we read about the, you know, the early life in, in India, very austere and they didn't have bottled water, you know, many things. I remember when we were in Bombay and everybody was getting sick and one life member asked Gary Rajmaraj, do you boil the water? I said, no. And he said, well, you have to boil the water. And we did that, but then we found out you have to boil the water for at least 45 minutes, and then you have to filter it. <laughs> so we bought these filters and, you know, we tried, but everybody got stomach ailments. Now at least we have bottled water, so it's not as bad. But uh, Prabhupada had complete faith, so he could go uh, anywhere and everywhere and preach to anyone and everyone. Without, he never considered, you know, anything. He preached the same to everybody. If you read Prabhupada, he, he, when he actually preached, he just preached the same to everyone. And if somebody came, he would try to engage them one way or another. He didn't ever, you know, say, first you have to give up your intoxication and all that. He didn't say that. He just said, Chanarai Krishna. And he tried to give him some service. And then everybody would get purified. That was his prayer when he first got off the ship, that I, I, I have faith in the Holy Name, and if they can hear the message of the Bhagavatam, they will change, even though they're so sinful. And the, most of the first people that took shelter of Prabhupada were especially sinful. Although at least some of them were vegetarians, but otherwise they were very much dedicated to intoxication and sex. But just by Prabhupada's association and chanting the holy name, I was reading Sham Sundar Prabhu's book. So he was describing his lifestyle. Radhana Swami had mentioned that he's very bold to even tell anybody how they were living. You know, so much addicted to things. And so he was, you know, they'd read a little Bhagavatam, they heard about Prabhupada from Mukunda. And he was thinking, I don't know if I can give up this, you know, lifestyle. And they were waiting when Prabhupada came, waiting at the airport. And he, he described it when he saw Prabhupada, just the first looking at him, he was so overwhelmed. He said he'd never seen such a beautiful person and immediately said, I give up everything. <laughs> and that was many people like that. I just get a Bhagavad Gita, read it, and change very quickly. So Prabhupada had that faith and he could impart it in others and it's spreading more and more. And even the mundane society is uh, moving at least more and more people are trying to avoid some sinful activities, at least especially that meat eating. When Prabhupada first started preaching in America, vegetarianism was considered like suicide practically. You know, if you don't eat meat, then you just can't live. They had in America, they had a food pyramid or something, the government you know, what you should eat. And it was based on three meals. Every meal had to have at least meat, fish, or eggs. Ideally, two of them, you know. In the morning, you have, you know, a bottle of restaurants that you wonder how any American could survive when you see what the American breakfast is. The European breakfast is a little bit reasonable, and, and the Asian restaurants, they advertise all of them, but the American one, 
you know, meat and eggs and milk and orange juice and you know, everything all together. And so they have a lot of overweight people. But. So the holy name is that powerful. So that Vritasura was cursed. He, he, the only reason he was acting like a demon, he was actually a great devotee, not only to some brahmanas, but in this Vritasura birth, what was his father was a brahman? And Indra was afraid because he was so powerful that Indra was afraid of fighting with him for fear he would get killed. So I, I don't know where we are in the Leela, if it's before or after, but Vritasura was saying, Indra, come on, kill me, <laughs> you know, because he wanted to get liberated from that body. He was cursed by Mother Parvati uh, to become a demon, even though he was a great devotee. And, but he had made some joking remarks to Lord Shiva, and she took it as very offensive, so she cursed him. Even Shiva told her, you stupid woman, you shouldn't have cursed him, you know. But, but Vritasura just said, okay. At that time, he was Chittiketu. So he was a super powerful demon that was just devouring all the demigods, and even though his arms were cut off, and, and Indra was still afraid to approach him, but then he got his nerve up. He was afraid also of the sin of killing a Brahmin, which is very sinful. But, you know, we go around Tulsi every morning, Brahma Hachari, you know, and even, but so if you think, well, you know, this particular devotee is really giving me a hard time. I'll kill him and, you know, I went around Tulsi, so it's okay. Then we'd be in big trouble. Because we do so many things just in our daily routines and our yearly routine that are, say, they can free you from all sinful reactions, even this and that, going around Tulsi, bathing in the Ganga, especially in Gaur Pramun or something, just chanting the holy name. So many things we do, reading the Bhagavatam every day, but that's not the reason to do that, to get free from your bad karma. That the reason to chant the reason to read the Bhagavatam, the reason to go around Tulsi, is to get Krishna Prema, to get love for Krishna. And if someone has love for Krishna, they're not going to do any sinful activities. They won't have to worry about that. And we already chanted, so in that way we're relieved. And we might wonder, well, why am I still suffering? You know, why do I still have my teeth falling out? Why is my knee going bad, and why are my ears ringing? You know, I'm chanting the holy name. <laughs> but I heard that Mani Prabhu, he was saying like that. He said, it's Krishna's mercy to make us realize that we don't want to take birth again. <laughs> Otherwise, you know, we might think, well, it's not so bad, you know. I'm chanting Hare Krishna. I can enjoy spiritual life. Gradually, gradually, you know, something happens. Or we can realize just by knowledge, just by hearing from Srimad Bhagavatam. And so we're worshiping Lord Nishingadev, Lord Nishingadev, you know, also especially merciful. Uh, to the most fallen, but to everybody. Well, everybody's the most fallen, Kali Yuga. Lord Chaitanya is the most merciful. But we need the shelter of Nityananda to get the shelter of Lord Chaitanya. To get the, Prabhupada said one time, to get the mercy of Nityananda, you need the mercy of Jagai and Madai. I took it at the time I was there. That meant we have to go out and preach to Jagai and Madai and get their mercy. <laughs> because Prabhupada said at that same time, he said at that time there were just the two Jagai and Madai. Now everyone is Jagai and Madai. He said, I'm not bragging, 
but all my disciples were Jogaya. <laughs> Some were not so bad, you know, but everybody almost, especially in Prabhupada's time, there was, there was a meat eater at least at some part of their life, cow eater, you know. So we're definitely uh, on the list. I mean, we never killed a Brahmin, but we're responsible for killing cows. You can't take the argument like the meat eater steak, well, I didn't kill it, you know, someone else killed it. Even in some Buddhist, Buddhism is supposed to be uh, non-violence is the main thing, but in the name of Buddhism, you know, they've twisted everything around, so some of them eat meat, and they say, well, if the animal was killed specifically so I could eat it, then it would be sinful, but if someone else killed it just in the slaughterhouse or something, then it, I have, it's nothing to do with me, <laughs> so it's okay. It's good for my health. It's, but we had one guy from another Christian religion who was coming around at our temple. He was a little bit curious about Krishna consciousness. And that group, they, they, they're not vegetarian. And I showed him one movie about the slaughterhouse or something. And he was appalled, but then he said, well, you can't stop that, right? Because as long as there's customers, you know, as long as people buy it, someone will sell it. It's like America one time, they wanted to, all the cocaine was coming from one South American country. And so they were, on the case of that country, and they, they, they told him, your people are buying it. We can't stop people from selling it, as long as there's so many customers willing to pay so much money. So America got very angry. You can't criticize us. And we're not going to give you any more aid. Or but that's just the way it goes. So as long as people want these sinful activities, it, it's going to be promoted. Now, because of Lord Chaitanya's movement, Kali is in anxiety and he's promoting more vigorously. They have people now promoting, uh, and very influential people on the internet, the carnivore diet. You heard of that one? Yeah. You eat only meat. And they're claiming that they were so sick and they were on 10,000 pills every day and nothing would help them, and they went on this diet of only meat, and now they're cured of everything. And one is only beef, only beef and water. So this is how bad it is in Kali Yuga. <laughs> but still vegetarian, you know, non nonviolence. But Prabhupada said, we're not vegetarian, we're not anti-abortion, we're not, we're Hare Krishnas. And you know, by being Hare Krishna, we're, we're against everything. People are protesting the war here, the war there. And, but the Hare Nam, we're protesting war, we're protesting peace also. Because so-called peace means unrestricted sense gratification, right? And there's no war and then everything is nice and you can have all the internet pornography and whatever you want. So both is bad. We're promoting Krishna consciousness. So it's the, the real revolution, the Sankirtan revolution. I was just reading yesterday some, I can't remember where, but it was stated that Prabhupada says like that, the Sankirtan revolution. It's creating a revolution in the minds of the conditioned souls by putting Krishna Kata into their ear. The Goswamis were doing that by pouring the nectar of Krishna Kata into the ears of the conditioned souls, you know, freeing them of all the 
sinful reactions and stopping them from doing more sinful things. If someone thinks I'll just pay the fine and then I'll just be a criminal again, it's not going to work. So this is seventh offense is sometimes called the worst. The first offense is also called the worst offense. Blaspheming devotees. But take trying to take advantage to cheat Krishna very serious. So these rishis, you know, they were kind of encouraging, but in the case of killing Vrtasura, it wasn't sinful because he was acting as a, a big demon and also he would be liberated from this demoniac body by being killed, so he wanted to be killed. <laughs> so it's described that in that, this Leela, it's the mixed devotee and the pure devotee. Vrtasura is a pure devotee even though he's in the demon body. And Indra is a mixed devotee, worried about getting killed, afraid, afraid of getting sinful reactions. But Indra, he was never afraid of getting sinful reactions when he tried to kill everybody in Vrindavan. And when he, uh, more than once, disguised himself as the husband of some woman in order to seduce the woman. And he did get sinful reactions for that. Terrible sinful reaction. But because he's a devotee, uh, Krishna lets him go. And, you know, by the whole Govardhan Leela thing, where, you know, other demons came, most of them were only trying to kill Krishna. They were trying to kill everybody in Vrindavan. I think one of them had the idea that he would kill all the children. And then because feeling separation from the children, all the others would die. Yeah. So that was one demon's idea. But Indra literally wanted to annihilate everyone by flooding everything. But then Krishna was able to show how insignificant uh, Indra is, even with all that power, with, you know, these storms that, that, that are used to, at the end of the uh, universe to flood everything, flood the entire universe, these clouds against Krishna, they couldn't do anything. And even though it rained seven days and nights, there was no flood damage at the end. Krishna had arranged that all the water, as soon as it hit the ground, it just evaporated. So, and Govardhan Hill was feeling ecstasy uh, by the thunderbolts and the big chunks of ice and all these things that were falling like flower garments. And all the people were under Govardhan Hill and it was like a heavenly planet with unlimited everything they needed, no discomfort. Everybody was surprised. And Krishna, and then they, they all got, like we sing, Gopi Jana Balava Giri Bharadari. The gopis under Govardhan Hill were especially happy because for 24 hours a day, they could just stand right next to Krishna and and look at him all they want. Normally, they could only see him in the night, sneaking around and stuff. So they were especially happy. And everybody was happy. So that Krishna just used Indra and then destroyed the pride of Indra. Because he was a devotee, Krishna tolerated that he got carried away by pride his attachment to being worshipped. So, anyway, the Srimad Bhagavatam is amazing book. I, I, I just listened to a class by our big scholar, Radha Ramanfa. So he was explaining how the Bhagavatam is so, in, in, in so many ways 
completely superior to any other scripture. So we have to take it, you know, it, in poetry, even one, one scholar who just took the job of analyzing Sanskrit poetry, he said of all that the Srimad Bhagavatam is the most beautiful poetry ever written. And he was telling so many things that the, the vocabulary that he translates sometimes, and he says some, some words, he looks in the dictionary, the Sanskrit dictionary, and that the only reference to that word is in that verse of the Bhagavatam. The word never used anywhere else that anybody had found. So how to understand it, then they have the commentaries of the acharyas. The Bhagavatam uses so many different Sanskrit uh, rhythms, more than any, any, any other scripture. And what to speak of the subject matter, but it's totally transcendental. So it's Amala Purana, there's no contamination, nothing about how you can do yagyas to advance yourself in the material world, in this life or the next, which is what the Puranas are full of, and the Mahabharata is full of. So that's why Narada Muni chastised Vyas. You're giving people what they want, but you're not helping them, because you have not sufficiently, exclusively, just to, to told about the unlimited glories of the personality of Godhead. So the Bhagavatam Dharma Projita Kaitava, it, from the very beginning it kicks out any materially motivated religion. Lord Chaitanya, when Devananda Pandit finally got humble, um, humbled, and he asked Lord Chaitanya, what is the Bhagavatam? Even though he was a foremost famous scholar of the Bhagavatam, and the, he could recite it more beautifully than anyone else, but he didn't see the devotional, he didn't understand it. So when he asked Lord Chaitanya, what is it all about anyway? Lord Chaitanya said, only bhakti, nothing else. The Bhagavatam is all bhakti. And then he understood that and became a Bhagavatam preacher. And Prabhupada has done that. Uh, he had so much faith in Srimad Bhagavatam that he translated it and commented in English. And, but he didn't stop there. He went all over the world and made devotees in every country and found and got it published in so many languages. Now it's coming up this Bhadra month, I think, and another big push to distribute Srimad Bhagavatam sets. Some devotees in America, I, I heard a few other places, they're selling Srimad Bhagavatam sets just you know, in the parking lots or on the street, not just to the Indians, to just because, like Prabhupada said, our books are sold by the enthusiasm of my devotees. So the devotees are so enthusiastic. The one who sold 5,000 books in one day, I, I know him. I, I was living with them one, time, one month. Whenever I watched him distribute books, I would become stunned, and I couldn't move. He just, he was just so fast. And he inter someone interviewed him when he, that day, and he sold like 55 sets and 5,000 books altogether. And it was just in, from 11 in the morning till 7 at night. And he said, what, what did you say? He said, I don't know. You know, he just goes up, ah, you know, he's so excited. And he mostly talks, he doesn't like to talk about the book very much, but people just buy it, like, which is amazing. It's, it's also the mercy of Kali Yuga that now everybody can pay, you know, like, like this because not that many people would ever walk around with $300 cash and to buy books like that. But because they can just click 
and just show them the QR code finished, you know, before they know what happened. But it's not like heavy, it's just friendly, but it's just so blissful. And that's why Sankirtan devotees are everywhere, preachers. That's how Prabhupada was. He he was just so pure and and he loved everybody so much that anyone who met him would just, you know, want to, they would, at worst, they would just think it was a wonderful experience to meet him. Even people where he called them rascals and fools. When they left, they'd say, well, thank you very much, Swami. It was a very nice meeting. <laughs> because he was speaking the truth and he wasn't criticizing them, he was just criticizing their conditioning. He was actually, you know, honest. he was trying to help the soul. So he helped everybody. And he's empowered devotees that we all have some part, some small part of that shakti and trying to bring people to Krishna, to take over the world. We want to take over, we had to get the preaching spirit. I went to Singapore one time and many times, but one time uh, there's a lot of Christians there, they're very fired up. And they had a campaign, <clears throat> one month, you know, something, take over Singapore for Jesus. And every one of them was going door to door and hanging on something on the doorknobs and all the apartment buildings. And, saying, you know, would you like to get a free CD movie or something and call us? And I was thinking we should do like that. We want to take over Cologne. Prabhupada said about the Germans, he, was t he said about Hitler, what one man, what, and he wasn't even German, but, but you know, what he did, you know, so, these devotees, they should do something great and bring Krishna consciousness to the whole world. He said the same thing in America. He said, you Americans, you have to do something great for Krishna. It applies to everybody, because everyone thinks, you know, my country is special. But, but to do it, something great. Everything you do, a devotee does, is great, actually, even just a little bit of chanting. But when we make a more effort, like you're having a Rathiyatra coming up, I was just in Munchen Rathiyatra. That, such a big tourist area, you know that. Munich, right? So you, we go down the street and there's so many people and everybody's filming, you know. Not everybody, but so many are filming. I always see groups of Muslim girls, you know, big smiles, they like it. But, and it, we met, uh, we had a big Harinam on Saturday and there was a group from Ukraine, nine devotees that are just touring Europe for Harinam. And he said, in, in Ukraine one time, some guy filmed the Harinam and he must have been like, some really popular guy, he put it up and it ended up getting two, over two million views. So that, you know, our little Harinam with a few people kind of look at us and once in a while someone will dance with the devotee. But you don't know how many people are actually seeing it. We don't know who is filming, it may be the big host famous TikTok guy or something, you know. And then he puts it up and then gets a lot of money for it. <laughs> but, you know, people are chanting. All right, so, Vrtasura Kijai. We can learn from him. He's a pure devotee. He's not afraid to fight. He knows he's gonna be killed. But Indra didn't know Indra was afraid. He's mixed, mixed devotee, not sure. 
wants some perk so Indra gets all this heavenly opulence and everything. Because he does a very big service, very difficult. So any comments or questions? Very beautiful. Awful. And nice to see so many to believe in it. Thought would come fast. Any comment, question? Yeah. I heard Prabhupada say to Ramesha Prabhu once that he had a plan to conquer the world in 10 days, but he said the devotees are not ready. So I was thinking, what, what the, did he mean by it? they're not ready? It was 18 days, 18. like the Battle of Kirk Chetra. I don't know, not ready don't have absolute faith. So just think if every devotee that ever got initiated, you know, just never gave up, never quit, you know, just then, <laughs> well, but even without that, even though so many come and go, still the movement is spreading like anything. But Ramaswar did ask him, like, how will we take over the world? Because Prabhupada had said it so many times that we would take over the world. And I, I remember often, back when I first joined, that was, we talked about that all the time, we're going to take over the world. Everybody was like, then gradually it was like, well, we have to merge into the world. <laughs> You know, we can't be weird, we can't be too rebellious. We gotta be in, because, you know, there was more opposition. So we asked him, how is this gonna happen? And that was in 77, you know. He said, will it be the war, will there be revolution, election, you know, devotees run for politics. He, he was listing off different problems, said none of those things. He said, simply by the sankirtan, means all the preaching, book distribution, harinam, temples, book festivals, all this, the, the atmosphere of the world will become purified, you know, by the vibration of the holy name more and more. And gradually, people that are actually good will get into political offices and everything. And, Prabhupada made one comment like, the historians will be bewildered. How did the Hare Krishnas take over the world without firing a shot, and without any war or anything? And somehow the humans can't learn that wars just don't help. You know? <laughs> a few people do profit by war, a few people, you know. But it doesn't change anything. And I remember when they were first going to have an election in Russia, a real election, I supposedly. There was a cartoon in some somewhere showed two Russian ladies out sweeping the streets. And one asked, "What would happen if so and so gets elected?" And the other one said, "We'll be sweeping the streets. It was not going to change anything for us." You know, just changes for those people that get into office because they make so much profit by it. But it doesn't change for the people very much. So, when Prabhupada said we're not ready, he was hoping to inspire us to get ready, <laughs> to get more serious, to be in full faith in Krishna, to be like, you know, willing to die for the cause, but not that we have to, we're not, he said, we're not going to make war, we're not going to have rebel, it's not going to be some kind of revolution. The Sankirtana itself is, a, is revolutionary. 
to change the consciousness of the people. So one by one by one, like that devotee who sold the 5,000 books in one day, he joined, you know, you've probably heard of Ram Roy Prabhu in New York, he has, he's been doing that Harinam like for 12 years now, six days a week, six hours a day. And last year, marathon, I think they did, they went up to eight or 10 hours a day. And sometimes when he started, it was very small. He'd kind of go by himself and whoever would join him, you know. The temple wasn't giving him any facilities. But that Mahotsa, he, he was studying at the university, Manhattan University, which is right next to the park where Ram Roy chants every day. So he walked by there. So he he got a one of these on chanting Hare Krishna books. And so that's how he got into it. And then he joined the party. And then he became like somehow an amazing book distributor. It was his idea to come up with those sets and tie them all together. And he's inspiring you know, more and more and making even sometimes new devotees that are going out. So, but just from, you know, the little Harinam party that's there every day, it affects people. All right, so get ready, become qualified. And we have, our only qualification is Prabhupada's mercy. Prabhupada's, uh, you know, Parents' Day is coming up on Monday, no, Tuesday. Right. After John last week. And Prabhupada, you know, when he was took birth, it was in the night of Janmashtami night. So all attention was on Janmashtami, not so much on him. But that's the way Krishna arranged it. But if it wasn't for Prabhupada, most of us wouldn't know about Janmashtami. Now all over the world, there's huge Janmashtami festivals, of course, especially in India, with literally millions of people coming sometimes. Not exaggerating. I heard Berlin last year at 700, because they have big Indian community. But more and more people, they know about it. So Janmashtami is celebrated in China and Japan and, you know, South America and Russia. Everywhere, Rathiyatra is celebrated. It was all Prabhupada's mercy. What he's given is, is too much inconceivable. You heard about the Russian Rathiyatra was last week? Anybody hear about it? The police estimated the crowd at half a million <laughs> and some big government or Indian ambassador, different people, big, big people came to speak. And there's a picture of the mob, I don't know where it was, but you know, Prabhupada went there. Uh, and we know how it was in the beginning for devotees. And he was just there like four days, I think. Preached to one person made him a devotee. He made a lot more devotees. And now, you know, we find the Russians everywhere. Some temples are mostly Russian. <laughs> what to speak of in Russia. So that's the power of Prabhupada. And then when he said 10 days or 18 days, one time, Prabhupada was leaving Los Angeles and he, he came down to give class. Even though he was a little late, 
by his normal to the airport. Prabhupada would like to be very early. And the temple president was saying, we have to go, probably have to give class. But all he said was, I'm leaving now, and I'll be back in a few days. And I want everybody to come to Srimad Bhagavatam class every day. And then he left. And then after a couple of months, a devotee wrote, feeling separation, because he'd been there in L.A. like two or three months. And he said, Prabhupada, you said you were coming back in a few days. And you didn't come back. Prabhupada said, you don't know the day of Brahma. <laughs> so when he said 18 days, maybe he meant the day of Brahma or the day of Indra or the day of somebody else, you know. There's many different days, depending on which planet you're on. Shrimad Bhagavatam ki jai. Shri what is it? Vijay Gauranga Dayalnitai. Vijay Gauranga Dayalnitai. Vijay Gauranga Dayalnitai. Who gave those names? Who gave those names? It's been a long time ago. 